On the breakfast today, with the glamour of a power shift to the south, the zoning of the presidential ticket of the People's Democratic Party PDP for the 2023 presidential election has divided the governors and national assembly members. Also on the breakfast, the Super Eagles of Nigeria arrived Kumasi for the World Cup playoff of the first leg encounter with the Black Stars of Ghana today. And don't forget, we also will be looking through today's newspapers and analyzing the biggest stories of the day. Welcome to The Breakfast on PLUS TV Africa. I am Justin Akadone. I am Messi Bokos. Beautiful Friday morning. And as always, you have a lot of people saying, thank God it's Friday. I hope you're saying that already. Okay, yes, I am Messi. You don't know how make... Friday is. You know, well, Friday, you, you know, I haven't worked Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. You can doze, you can go to the beach, you can just relax and not think about work. I think work you're being very something. dramatic this morning. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm not thinking of going to Nollywood, but the thing is that I prefer the fact that Friday is here and um, I'm not thinking of working tomorrow. Definitely. Mm. Yeah, that's good for you, but not for every other person. So uh, they will do entirely, try and work, They'll try and rest on Sunday. Then. Yeah, it's, it's entirely not complete. <laughs> Yes, it is Friday and uh, whatever it is, you just have to find uh, and take time to really rest. I think that should be an advice I should give to myself, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, anyone should just find time to really um, rest because there's nothing like um, resting after having gone through um, maybe a rigorous week. Well, Friday it is today and uh, they are trending, just and trending stories are uh, making the rounds across uh, social media, across Nigeria, across the world. Mercy, more declarations ahead of 2023 elections. A lot of people are declaring, you know. Mercy, do you have anybody that is claiming in your family so I could support them or because uh, it's 2023 or you know, this is where all the monies are being pushed around or... <laughs> well, I, I, I really don't think that, uh, you know, that's not the kind of politics that we're looking forward to no, uh, no, talking about not. more declaration. The reason that's making the headlines is because you have Peter Obi, a mm. former governor of Anambra State, uh, declaring his intention. Prior to this time, you had the fact that a lot of people were saying, oh, we want Peter Obi, you know, to come through or come out. And uh, you, you, because I think that there seemed to be a trend, a trend. Mm. Now, the trend is you have people who come out to say, we want you to become president. Mm. So Even instance, before you, you make Justin, your intentions. So, no. just get, so, some people are just saying, Justin, you have to be president. Justin, mm. you need to go out. We, <laughs> so eventually, um, Peter will be, and that's getting several reactions, getting a lot of people talking. Uh, he's a former governor of a number, a number of states, state, like yes. I mentioned earlier on. And he's joined the race, uh, the race for uh, presidency come 2023. Mm. And uh, some people are saying, oh, really? What about the Biafran agitation? Mm. Uh, what happens to it? Are, are you really serious? And some other person said, uh, if you really look at Peter Obi, he, he never really, um, Peter Obi never came out to... Or there was never a time where he, he came all out talked to say about that you, you know, wanting to contest. Yeah. Okay, Biafra then. support. Yeah. Mm. Yes, that's true. You know, of the Biafran, uh, you know, agitation, agitation. Or whatever you. So that was, I mean, so you, you, you can actually say there's a lot of mixed feelings uh, following his declaration. A lot of people are thinking that this time, you know, to, it's not late. Mm. As much as some people feel like you have all the persons who have been ahead of this. I mean, they have been or they're already out and they have talked about their intention and he might just be a little bit late. But, you know, the election, the campaigns are yet to start. No, I don't even think yet. that that's an issue. It's okay for people to come out with, you know, intentions and say they want to declare. But we'll quickly hold, hold on to these thoughts. Uh, we'll take a break now and let's quickly roll the tape and let's look share, at this yeah, one. Let's hear from when we come through, we'll continue the conversation. Please stay with us. Thank you for being representatives and what you're doing in your various communities. My job here is simple. is to inform you as my own father 
that I would be contesting, aspiring so that this stage more aspirants I be aspiring for the post of President of Nigeria Yeah, that's the, the former uh, governor of a number of states there, uh, Peter Obi, uh, making his declaration on his intention known to run for the presidency come 2023 and uh, made, uh, you know, reactions from various um, stakeholders. Uh, you know, Twitter was a, a buzz yesterday and the Nigerians are talking. You know, Messi indeed talked about uh, the Biafra inclination and all of that. But then I still believe that uh, if Peter Obi wants um, to run, he has all um, legitimate, uh, you know, right to run for presidency. You know, amazingly, to just uh, on Sunday, a 35-year-old uh, IT expert uh, also declared um, his intention to uh, to be president. Uh, some people would like um, question um, what does he, what is he bringing to the table? What is his pedigree? What has he done for the country? He has not even gone through uh, maybe the local government, uh, the House of Representatives, uh, the Senate, or even you know, the state um, house of um, assembly. But the fact is that some people just want to see changes, uh, you know, made in the country and they feel that um, one way they can do that is uh, by trying to push themselves out and to um, make their voices known. Well, as much as that's very valid, uh, yeah. because the constitution allows for everyone to contest and uh, you know, vie for political office, vote and be voted for. It's within their constitutional right to do mm. all of that. But you also want to look at the issue of, really, the presidency is a serious issue. Yes, we understand. So it's okay. So we're going to have more persons coming out to, yes, you know, put out their intention. At the end of the day, there's a lot to the elections. There's a lot to becoming the president or the governor. It is a uh, Even lot. though we know that there's been a pattern, there's been... Um, there's been a culture over time, but we're hoping that we're able to, you know, break that jinx and, you know, move forward, mm -hmm. right? But yeah. I, though sometimes, that's because I really saw someone who said they were going to, I mean, some people would say, if, if it was in another context, it would probably okay. be, say, be said that, you know, it's issue of racism. But, so I took to my Twitter okay. uh, account, I mean, of course, I took Twitter and I said, as much as it's within your right to contest for I mean, it's within your right to say, yeah, you want to become president and contest the election. But we also need to understand that the office of the president is not a joke. Because yeah. I've seen a lot of jokes. I would call it a joke. I'm really sorry. It's within your right, but it feels like it's a joke. Mm. First of all, you have to belong to a political party. Now, we know the issue that we're grappling with right now in Nigeria. We're talking about the issue of having two dominant parties. Yesterday, we had one of our resource person. I mean, talking about... Um, Oh no, I have to remember his name now. Our guest on the show, Ezekiel uh, uh, Yaitok, yes. who said he feels like the media has been pushing a certain narrative as regards uh, who becomes, you know, a certain narrative as regards political party, those who are contending and mm. all of that. So he feels like the narrative the media has shaped over time uh, to. Uh, party system, it even though that's not in the books, it's a multi-party system. Well, of course, of course yes. you have two dominant two parties. Ones, yes. I don't want to mention the name. You know, it probably might just be it might just be counted for some set of adverts, <laughs> but we already know, right? Yes, but but that's but that's not the point. Clarity. So, but as much as you want to look at that, these political parties, one of the things that's unique about them is the fact that, or they have in common, is the fact that they have structures. Mm. You talk about structures and the ideologies entire, and all. Uh, not not necessarily because mm. I don't. If they do have ideologies, <laughs> I don't mind. <laughs> there's a always for, a cross cutting. Discussion. But the issue is the fact that they have structures, and so structures across the 36 local government, mm. because those who vote most times, you see all of the rant on Twitter, are brilliant, very fantastic, very patriotic. It ends but it doesn't trickle media. down to you having, um, you know, a PVC or getting out on the day of Most election to vote. Social so media. those are the grassroots. You see those grandpas and the grandmas. They're the ones who even do the, the, the ones who come out voting. to vote. So there's a lot. And what do they recognize? They know two logos. They, they can understand that it's this or it's that. I will not mention. Mm. That's the point. I get so you. for those of, those of um, I mean, a lot of persons, I saw one that really triggered me and made me Which put out that tweet. That? I can't tell you. I don't even know what <laughs> political party. But I felt very embarrassed. I felt like, you know, we think that we're a joke. 
of a country. Like, you know, some people the office just, of the presidency is not a joke. No, that's, that's the Within that's your the, ambience, it doesn't mean that anyone... Highest, because I've seen uh, a lot of people just come out and want to become country. the president. Really? How? Uh, okay, let's move on. Let's just slide away from all of that because who knows, I just might declare my intention to run. And, and you must see, you, you would support <laughs> me. You'd be my campaign manager. And because I'm not, uh, you know, partisan. Oh, well. Uh, an independent candidate chair, that is. Anyway, this one goes out for, for guys right now. Would you take contraceptives? Because um, um, a research finding just came out and uh, it was said that um, male contraceptives are 99% are effective. Over time, I will talk about contraceptives. It is uh, more of um, a woman thing, you know, what they usually would take. Miss, why are you giving me that face? <laughs> <laughs> what they usually take, you know, to avoid them getting pregnant. But right now, men can also take contraceptives, and it has been proven to be 99% effective. Would you, as a man, take contraceptives? <laughs> Mercy, why are you laughing? I will not take contraceptives. It's as though you're almost emasculating me. <laughs> Why are you laughing? I don't Mercy? know. I mean, I mean, to be very honest, I really don't know where this conversation is heading. But you know, okay. it's a very good one. Is it? <laughs> Isn't it? <laughs> a very good one. At a time where we're grappling with population, if you look at our population, population can be a strength. It can also be a weakness. And I, I think that for Nigeria, uh, we have a population. If you want to really say, if you look at our population, are we really very productive? And when you have an unproductive population, it calls for a lot of concern. It does. So sure security does. concerns are there as well. There are a lot of issues. So I really don't know how this would go. It, it sounds really funny, I must say. No, man, must, let me put it to you. If you were married, would you ask your husband to take contraceptives? I don't know what that <laughs> means. I don't understand. But, you know, it sounds like a brilliant idea. I must come It's a brilliant. Very brilliant idea. Oh, we need to begin. We should to, leave the contraceptives to you. Women. No, I think we need to begin to control. Um, this is actually another form of birth control. I know, you know it is. When we talk about birth control, we push it, you know, to the other side of the gender. But it's very brilliant. And it's a two way street. And if it's, uh, it's been found ninety nine. Uh, percent effective that means that you know we're at it right now and I think that Nigeria should embrace this uh, we need to get to a point where we begin to control the, the children that we uh, put out I don't want to say chunk out if you say chunk out it feels like it's production process it doesn't sound very human <laughs> I mean very sarcastic and be very funny about this one because it's so funny but it's I think it's a very brilliant idea Trust me, whoever came up with this one did very great, and Africans should begin to embrace this. Yesterday, <laughs> yesterday, no, so no, I, saw I, video. I don't know, you. did you see that video yesterday? Which of the videos? So there's a video that was put out yesterday by, uh, ah, God, so why, why everybody's name skipping my mind? You're my getting mind old. Uh, <laughs> which is okay, old age is acceptable. So yesterday, you, you, yeah. you have this, um, so you have uh, a musician who's very comical. He's always expressing his concern and crush for DJ Copy. I, 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 yeah, I'm trying to remember. I think the Age again. I remember that stuff. Yeah. I remember his, mm. what the name that's very popular for. Mm -hmm. And he talked about that people should begin to have children that they can cater for. Children that you're planning I wonder for. why people have so and many And so kids. if you have male contraceptive right now that's been found 99% effective, Boom. It's, it's the solution. It's the answer. No, we both take the men and the women. No, I think, I, I think if it's 99% very effective, then that's the answer to all of the problems of having children everywhere, you know? Because yesterday, um, when I watched that video, it was a valid statement. If you look at our population, I see that we have a population that's growing, not mm. at the same way we have production, mm. and it's affecting us. True. So some people have said that the Nigerian population is unproductive. And when you have an unproductive uh, population, that mean, it means you have a, a population or you have a group of people that are idle. And when you have idle people, what happens? They say, uh, you know, I don't mind, it's a devil's devil workshop. Yeah. And so you begin to look at the crime and criminality in our society. You begin to look at, no, take a, just take a walk. Just go around the streets of Lagos. And you see a lot of persons who are just sitting out, just doing nothing, really. 
And, and so that's a lot. So I, okay. I think that, you know, Africans and Nigerians would embrace this one despite the cultural bias and uh, religious sentiment that we might have. It's, it's really a good one to see that we're moving away from having the, mm. the other gender, mm. having mm. the con uh, contraceptive nope, and having nope, the male gender. Nope. We, having are, the, we both should. Justin, we need to move away from this now. <laughs> Mercy, you and I will take the contraceptives. Not like why, why we are a couple or something. I don't but. understand. <laughs> I think there's a brilliant idea and it should be accepted. You know, Nigerians should embrace this one. I feel that okay, the federal fine. government should we'll pay embrace it since it has been proven to be 99% uh, effective on men. But just in case the men do forget to take the pill, the women should also take it as well. I'm just saying. No, I think <laughs> that if the men take it, it will go a long way in solving the problem. And then I, we I get, might just I get become... I get all of that. But, th but then again, uh, we should go on. Uh, Ghanaian president has slashed the, the salaries of uh, the ministers by 30%. Talk about cutting down the cost of governance. I think we should actually be borrowing some leaf from that here in Nigeria. Mercy, we have like a lot of paraphernalia of office in the country. Uh, we've, we've over time talked about um, bogus pay, jumbo pays in the country. Uh, ministers are getting a 30% um, slash in the salaries in Ghana. How do you react, Mercy? Well, I think that this is very brilliant and it's very logical of, you know, the Ghana, Ghana as a nation mm. and, of course, having President Nana uh, Akufuado taking this decision. Brilliant one. It's fantastic. Now, if you want to look at the rationale behind all of this, is that uh, the West African country, this Ghana, has adopted the measure to reduce spending as the country struggles with higher fuel costs and stalled progress on new tax. Which, like I say, it's it's fantastic. The essence of this is that the financial problems uh, and uh, you know the financial problems of the country. This is supposed to help you know with the issue of salaries, help you know reduce cost of spending, which is actually a very logical thing to do. I agree. When when you have um, at the time when I mean there's a lot that's going on. You know the cost inflation is is, is on the high rising, yes it's okay to look at your spending and reduce it and which is which is which is you know I'm, i must say i'm proud of ghana i'm proud of what the the ghanaian president has opted to do i know that a couple of times we have the nigerian government saying we may consider reducing uh, salary you know cutting down salaries to ensure that uh, you know we have this money, but it's just paper talk, uh, just a uh, just policy statement, no action. So I don't think this is rocket science. This is pure economics is. Uh, that they are putting into practice, cutting in the salaries. Because if you look at the cost of running government, for instance, Nigeria, mm. we run, um, you know, in a very expensive government. We do. Let, let, we do. Let's see if we can, if I can, you know, run through some of the statistics that's been put out, you know, by experts and researchers. Now, um, following this announcement, you would also want want to uh, agree with the Ghanaian government that they hope to save around $400 million through the mm. latest measures, and, and that's due to inflation, which I talked about, okay? So, but you want to come to Nigeria now, I probably might not have all of those statistics, but you, you, you would want to also agree with me that the cost of having a two uh, legislative, I mean, you have the, bicameral legislature, uh, you know, the bicameral legislature where you have the House of Reps and, and the Senate. The Senate is expensive and that's why when that bill was put out you know to have to create additional 11 111 seats for women especially out of what you have already it's a lot so who's going to be paying for all of this Nigerians we will be paying for this so extra cost for us so I think that th th this is fantastic and then if you look at Nigeria, I don't know if the Nigerian economy and the Ghanaian economy is going through the same thing, but you will just see, you know, a country where people are thinking, where you have leadership that's forward thinking and is saying, hey, we need to reduce this. I've also talked about travels. For those who are traveling, it has to be very mandatory. It has to be very compulsory. Uh, it means that all of those excesses where you just travel and go, it's, it's not going to happen. So they're traveling. reducing all of that. But what's going on with us? That I, I, saw, I, saw, I saw something. I don't know how true. I saw some documents that are flying all over social media. I think it's somewhere from Plateau State and uh, the government and they needed to travel. When they brought out the paraphernalia of office and the aid and how much they'll be expending on the trip, mercy, it was over. 
the amount was just humongous. And if that money were just uh, put into just maybe feeding, you know, indigent residents, that would go a long way. They were supposed to travel for just about a month. I saw the memo. It was, I can't specifically quote the amount, but it was really humongous. So, so that's what that's what we constantly talk about. If you look at, uh, you know, Africa, especially Nigerians, we're very flamboyant with our lifestyle. Mm. I remember a time where a lecturer, in, you know, in a lecture hall asked me, uh, how would you describe the Nigerian government or what would you say, what is an Owambe government? I should have known uh, that we're talking about the lifestyle, our spending attitude. Yeah. So you can say the Nigerian government is an Owambe government, a party government, where we spend so much free volatiles, the cost of running, and it would reflect in our budget. Go take a look at the budget. You see how much we pay, we, we, we allocate to, you know, Entertainment um, and uh, and other you things. know, current, uh, you, you call it, you know, when you have your budget, you have the capital expenditure and you have the recurrent. So most times, I mean, not most times, often for a very long time, look at the, the track record. You find out that we pay more attention, you know, to the recurrent expenditure. And when you look at the recurrent expenditure, what happens? Uh, that allocation is being taken is, is the cost of running governance paying and it's salaries really expanded over just within a year not on capital stuff that would last for like so exactly long so we spend more monies on running government mm. than you know spending more monies on projects that will benefit and ensure development for you know the theory and the statement is that if you see a government that is uh, very progressive, not that it's the, of the APC, I'm saying progressive government, you will say that it's a government that has, uh, that pays attention to capital Infrastructural development. Because yes. if you pay attention, if you are looking, where your heart is, is where you begin to check where your money is going. I'm sounding like a preacher now. It just shows that I've you <laughs> before. where your money goes <laughs> is where your heart is. So you see where the Nigerian money, the budget goes every time is always on the, you know, the recurrent expenditure. The and so that's the money we used to, you know, cater for government, pay salaries, run government, yeah. and all that. It's too much. We At the time where you have, debts. do you also talk about, you know, the fact that we have duplication of offices mm, are you that's also another case so you have some offices several are offices just that not are even doing the needed. same one and the same thing so yes senior special advisors senior special advisors <laughs> let's just move away from that that is a long we can take on top trending for this morning we'll take a quick break and when we return we'll go straight to off the press in a moment to join us again